Now, over in Ireland at the moment, the, the Mayfly and the Lochs are in, it's in full swing at the moment, and uh, a friend of mine who fishes, his fishes it all, every year he goes over to fish the, the mayfly and this is one of the flies that he really likes. So when I tie them both in a, as, a, as a mayfly pattern basically with all the differences in this case. It's a bumble, it's like a golden olive bumble, uh, muddler head but with this it's got the mayfly type tail uh, which is just pheasant tail and the other version would just be a golden pheasant crest with tail. So same at the front which is the only difference is the tail and it, it works well from here you'd fish both of these in the cast one up the line may fly in the point or vice versa uh, so I'm going to show you how you tie it and it's quite simple the cape uh, actually uh, a dyed for this is that dyed a golden yellow now what it is is a uh, this is a Mets grade 2 cape uh, it's a saddle. Now, uh, it's more, they call it like a dun, but it's got a bit of ginger in it, a gingery dun. But when you dye an actual colour, like you see that's olive in a way, but there's the colour I actually dye, this this yellow, this, which is a golden yellow uh, from Vineyards, which gives you a nice, it's perfect for this fly, a great colour for Ireland. If you're going to be fishing in Ireland, that type of colour goes down really well. Uh, same with the seals fur. Got the seals filled the same colour. Uh, there's a wee tag at the back. Now you can use red, or in this case, this is a hot orange and fiery brown blend. It's a fiery brown dye. There's a dye there, the fiery brown. And there's the, the orange. Just mix them together and you'll get that. As I say, you can use red, and I do use red in some of these, so it's up to sale. But I'm going to tie the Mayfly version, this one. Now it's quite simple. The hook I'm using, this is a size 10, it's a competition heavyweight. And this is the, the black nickel version. Thread, I'm just going to use a yellow thread, you could do olive, whatever, but I'll use just a normal, it's a uni thread 80 in yellow. Now I've waxed the thread, I'm start at the eye and I'm just going to quickly run it down. A nice base of thread down for your body and materials. So you take it to the point just before it goes round the bend and then remove. Now if you're in international competitions, uh, a tail length is about the length of the shank. And the, this version would be fine, but uh, if you're in this uh, mayfly, the tail length is, has to be twice that. Now it's just a natural brown cock pheasant tail fibre. Now I usually put on a good four to five uh, fibres for the tail. Now you're looking tail length, twice the length of the shank. Just go over there, get this as a measure. That gives you an idea. You can go longer if you want, it's up to yourself. So you can trim this the length of the body, which is there. The rib of the fly is a, an oval gold tinsel, small, or number 14 of your vineyards. Now what I'm going to do is just quickly take the thread up and then come back down tying in these materials. We get a fiery brown and orange uh, blend. You don't need much. Onto your thread. Slide it up. Now, I usually the anchor point there is the, the on the hook, so I tighten on to that point and then I want a nice colour. Don't want it too too weak, meaning put enough on so you can see it. That's fine. You can draw back any fibres going forward, just draw it back with your fingers. And then we can go to the golden olive. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure the fish can see this. So what I'm gonna do is take the thread up to the Around about 3mm from the eye. This is one of the hackles from the saddle. Just take away the fluff. Then we tie it forward with the underside of the feather facing myself. So two or three turns down, trim away the waist. And then come back up. Now I'm going to wind the dubbin to the fiery brown seals for. It's unusual this but what it is, I don't want the hackle to go any further by back. This is a, one of the easiest ways to do this, and I do this a lot with salmon flies. Uh, when you get a hackle halfway up, or two thirds of the... And just work your way down, so you're working kind of backwards to get to your, your fiery brown. And then what you do is wind your hackle. You want a couple of turns at the top, 
and then not many, maybe three turns, and then come back up with your thread and rub it, rub the fly like you would do if you'd see a piece of tinsel. And then we can trim this away. So that means by doing that, the hackle's not going, to, going on to this aiming point, like the, it's basically a tag if you want to call it. And then bring your rib up through. Just following the, the, th the yellow thread, you'll see it. There'll be space there, and then we can catch in my rib. It's an easy way of doing it. And if you do lose your, your rib, your, your hackle will stay on. Now just make a nice base of thread down. Uh, basically for your, your deer here. There's a muddler type head, and you get a, a hackle with this. Now this is a dyed olive. Uh, well basically it's a golden olive. It's a vineyard golden olive. This is a roe deer. This is from the belly. It's, it's a lighter colour than you'd have if you were on the, the ridge of the back of the, the deer. It's the light coloured stuff. Cut it close to the skin. Just look at the, the length of the tips you want. Quite long, that being a mayfly, you want it to be just a, a slightly longer than the fibres. So we hold this. We come round with two, two turns, just loose turns, and then slowly tighten up. And as it gets to a point about halfway through the, the, the fibre, and then we let the ends go and allow it to rotate around the shank. And then you wind straight turns towards the eye. Keeping it always the thread nice and tight, and then we can about a good four or five turns in front. Keeping the thread tight, don't let it go. Get straight in and let it finish. Three, four, that's fine. Tighten up. And then what we want to do is basically bring out the cut ends. Just want to trim them back. Now we don't have to be too fussy with these. I like a curved pair of scissors, a small curved pair. Now when you bring them out, uh, basically then tap them back from the eye and then what I like to do, because this device rotates, I then I can trim using the curve of the scissors and using the eye as an angle, just we can rotate the vise. As I say, don't be too fussy with it. Don't, it's just this lifts the, the fly, keeps it up a wee bit higher. Quick look. A couple of cut ends here, just trim them away. And there we are. Just draw it back. See how it's sitting. It's okay. And then we get our varnish. And just a bit shy with the varnish. I dab it into the eye there. Just in front of the, the D here. And then all we have to do usually give it a second or so, just allow it to soak in, and then I clean out the eye. And there we are, and that's uh, it's just a variant, it's a very good pattern. As I say, tie them with a the crest tail as well, and uh, you'll not go too far wrong. And uh, Especially in Ireland, and that colour combination, uh, you see, you all catch fish on that. So I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs>